and good be, hopefully you really should be. This your boy N-O-R-E. What up, it's DJ E-F-N. And this motherfucking drink champs, happy y'all will make, make some noise! Now, when it comes to legends, when it comes to legendary DJs, when it comes to people who've been down in this game forever and have maintained relevance and maintained consistency, consistency this man picture comes up. When we Googled him, Jesus and his picture came up. <laughs> The man is consistent, he's out here, he's still got love for the game. He, he, you know, so many accolades, so many uh, uh, different things that he's done, and, and, and he's still out here, still working, still doing it, right. still out here. Still out here with Gucci hats on and nice glasses, <laughs> walking through the, walking through with cameraman and doing what he gotta do. If in case you don't know what we talking about, motherfucker, the legendary Jazz is getting rid of us! Now, now, I honestly, I honestly get stoked when I, I, I speak to people like you, uh, people who laid down the legacy for people like me at EFN. Um, and when I look at you guys' legacy and, like, did, did, what, what time was, uh, uh, like, let's, let's take it from the beginning. Let's okay. take it from the beginning. Yep. How, did, how, how did you even, how did you get started DJing? How did I get started? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and who inspired you too? Mm -hmm. like, well, I had some older DJs in my neighborhood right. mm -hmm. that um, would do, do all of the block parties. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think what it was is I would I would go to these block parties. This is in Philly, right? This is in Philly. Okay. And I would go to these block parties, and these mm. guys would they would be on these enclosed porches, so you would never see what they look like. Mm. But and they had these massive speakers, and I always felt like they were the puppet masters because mm. they got you to do whatever they wanted to do with the music that right. you played. Mm. And I wasn't the one that was at the parties or at the block parties trying to get the girls. I was looking at that into a house, like trying mm. to figure out who the wizard was, but I couldn't see his face <laughs> and how he was pulling these strings and making mm. anybody do whatever he wanted with his music. Mm. Um, and I got to a point that I was like, I want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to have that level of control that that he has right. with this music. So, mm. you know, it literally started from grabbing a, any a, names of some of those guys. Oh Man, it was uh, it was a DJ named Disco Doc in Philly. It was a guy mm. Disco Rat. Um, mm. And this was this was pre hip hop too. Okay. Mm. So this wasn't you know this was they was playing mass production, brass construction, funk and soul records. Woo. But it was just you know they so like had these 70s? big giant yeah yeah. Right. But they had these big giant speakers and you know we would just get on a yeah. bike and you would ride to you know you ride twenty blocks because you heard somebody would have a block party and you would just go and just you know watch them do their thing. It was, you know a couple hundred people on the street mm -hmm. dancing. Um, and it was just kind of like that was something that I liked. I liked the effect of him playing this music and it had on people. It was like, mm -hmm. yo, like he was the Pied Piper. Like he, yeah. you know, I'm like, you could have told us to do anything and we probably would have did it d depending on how right. you string these records together. All right. Now, let's describe to us Philly back, back in the day because it had to, Philly had to go through so many different oh, transitions. Man. So describe us th that because um, us in hip hop, uh, us in New York rather, mm -hmm. Uh, we knew that it came from the Bronx, but it, it was always around us. So was it like that in Philly? Was it hip hop just everywhere? No, oh, no. Okay, yeah. Listen, okay. we we would get tapes from the Bronx wow. of hip hop. Wow. Like some, you know, everybody had a cousin right. that lived in New York. First of all, <laughs> everybody had a cousin right. that was from the Bronx, which everybody probably lied. Right, right. Cousin, from, like, yeah. Cool right. with Flash or, or Hurt. Right. Um, <laughs> But it was just like you would get these tapes. There would be a hundred generation tapes of T Connection and the Fever, mm -hmm. and you would basically imagine what these parties were like. You know, to me, it right. was thousands of people in these parties, right. and there was right. massive sound systems, and those parties could have been in a room like this. Right. But it was just what you got and yeah. what you imagined. But that that was it. You know, mm. we um, I I feel like the hip hop scene in mm. Philly was created off of what we thought it was in New York. Mm. Because there wasn't videos, there wasn't any of that. So you didn't really know. Who was the brothers really that know. got locked up from Philly that, um, that did the uh, crime? Cool C, cool Steady C. B and them. Um, now, now, they came out before you No, they was, they was around the same time. Same time, okay. okay. They, they, there was a group, right? What was the name of the group? CEB. Well, CEB was a group like... Because technically Steady they B were like the first rap gangsters. 
Like technically, like I mean, yeah. we heard NWA and all that, but no one well, went you know, to jail. You know, like Philly started like. I think Philly started. You know, you know, you know who that? it was? It was Schooly D. Schooly D. Yeah, yeah. That's he Philly. started all yeah. of that. Right. All so he was that. the first rapper that was actually living his lyrics, just, or even you know, more. He was talking about his neighborhood. Right. And he just described it to a T, and it was right. just you know. <laughs> right. No we one, didn't know no, that at no, no really really that time. That, you know, we, didn't, so. we didn't know that it was hoods outside of New York. So when we yeah. started to hear that, we was like, these really motherfuckers. By the way, we don't know if you know Jazzy yes. Jeff, but this is a show where we celebrate our legends. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We just, and we're, you, we are, you are now the first person that we interviewed since we won the award. Mm. Let's speak up to us. He's, 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 What's the name of the award? The National Film and Television Award. National Film go. and Television Award. But in yeah. true drink champs fashion, we send one of our friends to go pick up the award. We don't think we're going to win, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 We're against Ellen yeah. DeGeneres. Yeah. We're against a Saturday Night Live. So we didn't think we were going to win. So we sent our homie. Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel yeah. was against. And our homie, uh, Trevor Noah, and um, our homie it actually goes there, gets the award. And in true drink champs fashion, he breaks the award getting into his Uber. <laughs> He goes, he goes bar hopping first, takes he, he, pictures. Wait, wait, he with goes bar hopping? I didn't know that. Yeah, he took pictures of the award in all these different bars. <laughs> and then walking to the Uber, he dropped it. Oh, he dropped no. it. But make some noise for our junk family yeah. before. <laughs> I also, while we at it, yo, I want to big up to all the Revolt staff, man. They did a wonderful event yeah. yesterday, and um, they all came together. They was all stressed out. I love to see them all stressed out, but I love to see them all <laughs> and working. And they took care of the and team. And they took care yeah. of everything, so I want to big them up. Yeah. But now, let's get back to Philly, right? Because in a lot of ways, the biggest artist to date right now is Meek Mill, right? Yeah. For, for his triumph. Yeah. But if it wasn't you guys, I, I, do you see the direct of like he's like the new Philly King or or you don't see that. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But I don't think we ever looked at ourselves mm. as um I don't want to say Philly Kings cuz mm. when we say ourselves you mean like my, myself and Will. I right. think you know yeah, Philly was where we were from. Right. right. Um it was a little weird back then because there was a a point in time that we didn't feel that we kind of got the love that other people got mm. in Philly. Um that people got in different states. Right. Um, and, I, and I really think, looking back in hindsight, it was because a lot of that was new. You know, mm. everybody, was trying to, everybody was trying to figure out what, what it is we were doing. Mm. You don't know how long this is gonna last. Like, right. So I don't think it was people just didn't, didn't show love. You know, radio stations, I think, were a little bit afraid because they were kind of like, we don't know if this is gonna be here. Oh, you know, speaking in rap in general? Yeah. 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 So it's wow, kind of like, we're not going to really lock in right. to this. So I mm -hmm. think, you know, me coming along now, um, and, and Philly has always had champions that they really, really got behind, and right. they wanted to kind of go beyond Philly. You know, right. state property and right. beans and that whole mm. thing. Like, everybody the was super Philly. invested in mm. the roots. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I think, you know what, like Meek being a, the, the new younger generation, but also going through what he went through and coming through the way that he came yep. through, it's kind of like he's not only putting himself in a position that he's right. a champion in Philly. I think that is going way yeah. beyond, too. Yeah. I just feel like the hip hop history is so rich and it starts from, uh, it actually you can- the History yeah. in general, Philly. Uh, uh, Philly, yeah, but yeah, it yeah. actually, you guys are the originators. Like, you, you gotta claim that. You have to. We were one, we <laughs> I know you're humble, I know you're humble. I'm gonna claim it we, for we, you, nigga. We were one of them, you know, right. it was, it was, you know, it was a time, like I said, we didn't know what we were doing. We were, we were thinking that we were imitating New York, right. you know, and, and Philly is a very DJ heavy city. Right. It was the DJ was first. Mm. That only happened because we thought the DJ was first in New York. Mm. Right. We didn't mm. realize that the rapper took precedent and then the DJ was the person to back him up. Right. We came with like, listen, the DJ is first and the rapper tells everybody how great the DJ was. Right. That's, that was me and Will's dynamic. Right. That was Steady B and, and his DJ's dynamic. You know, that was, that, but that was what we thought. We right. thought that's how it was. So right. not realizing that you kind of created your own version, you know, your own spin on it that, you know, it was kind of like, right. okay, you know, but, because like I said, we didn't have videos and all the rest of that to kind of make everything seamless. We, you know, it was just kind of like, I got a tape. I don't know what cowboy looked like. I don't know what Melly right. Mel looked right. like. Right. So, you right. know, I, in my head, I'm imagining, you know, I remember seeing the first picture of, you know, Theodore and the Fantastic Five, Ooh. and I'm trying to figure out who was who. Like, <laughs> you know, when I found out, I'm damn. I was like that with NWA. The, the light-skinned dude ain't Theodore. I thought it was Theodore. <laughs> you know, so. 
you know, it was it was all of this is pre, so you just making it up as you go along. Now, how you like throughout all your years, you never got in trouble, like at least in the public eye. Like you're not in scandal. <laughs> like they skipped you. Google-able. Yeah, it's not Googleable. Uh, you know what, man? Like, oh, it's because Instagram wasn't alive back then. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> if Instagram listen, would have been popping listen, back then, if, it wouldn't come be. Come on, hip-hop. those tours. It, would, listen, too? it wouldn't be hip hop. <laughs> it would not on. be hip hop. Uh-huh. You know, um, but you know, I think just listen. I, I, in in spite of how Will and I, the records that we made, mm. none of us grew up in in the best environment. You know, we grew up in the inner city. We grew up in Philly. Right. You know, we had our share mm-hmm. of shit and just, you know, and, and, and it was what it was. But it was kind of like, you know, I think our approach was we're not really telling the story of where we grew up, but that doesn't hide how we grew up. But growing up like that, one thing that you develop is smart. Mm-hmm. That it's kind of like you don't tell your business. Right, right. You don't put your business out there. And I think some of those old school lessons that I got, I, I just kept with me that it's kind of mm-hmm. like, you know, it's, it, it, no one is squeaky clean. It just depends right. on who sees your dirt. Yeah, but you see how easy it is nowadays? Like these new kids, they oh, get listen. fame, and then the next day, the next day they on there tomorrow sniffing cocaine off of Kimberly's right. ass. But see, you know what it is? Yeah. We, we never, we never had yeah. a 24 hour a day camera right. Right. on you exactly. telling. Like, like, I, I, and you I, know what's I, messed up about this generation? They put the camera on themselves. Yeah, they big brother listen, themselves. They go I, like, I, I tell <laughs> people, I was like, let me ask you a question. If you got in trouble, would you go to Albee Square Mall in New York ooh, ooh. in the food court that's that and real Brooklyn shit. That's that, that Brooklyn I got shit in trouble? Right there. Right. And everybody's like, no. And I was like, that's what you just did. Uh, uh, that's yeah. exactly what you just did. And the people don't understand that it's kind of like, you know, but, you, you. This is how I know I come from the same era. I just used that same reference the other day about Albee Square Mall and the dude had to pull me to the side and say, Albee Square Mall. Yeah. I, did all. I said, I'm an old nigga. Fuck that. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the crazy thing is they actually, but um, but I seen I seen a documentary one time where it's talking about you and Will on tour, and I think y'all was on a Queen Latifah tour, mm-hmm. and everybody was looking at y'all different because y'all had pop records. They was considered pop records at the time, and y'all was going out every single night and still bossing ass on stage. Because that's that's what it was about. Right. I don't care what the records are. Right. right. You know, like right. when when we when we went to New York, when we did the whole live at Union Square and all the rest mm-hmm. of that, we had one record. Wow. You know, we going up there to do Girls Ain't Nothing But Trouble, but it's kind of mm-hmm. like, yo, okay, well, we got to do this freestyle. You got a DJ. We're going to bring out the beatbox. Like, our, our job is to entertain you. Right. Well, so set, it's kind of like, man, listen, the, the least important thing right. for us on the show was the record. Wow. Like, we, the record's a given. Wow. Anybody know the record, but we got to get them with all this other stuff. Well, let, let me ask you something. So you as a DJ, right, and where people critique records like that, and you're out DJing, like, cause you, I'm, I assume you was, was yeah. DJing, and you you know the records that they're playing. Did you ever like come and try to persuade like the group to go a different direction? Like, you know what nah. I'm saying? Oh, okay. Nah. Like, like, I don't mess with people's creative direction. Mm. You know, mm. it's kind of like, right. you know, this 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 is you're doing something that's inside of you, right. and you know, it to me is is you have the ability to say if you like it or you don't. Right. I ain't really got the ability to tell nobody to change shit. Right. <laughs> right. You know, because that's that, I don't want anybody to tell me to do the same thing. You know, it's, it's all subjective. Mm. You know, every A and R that you talked to at every record company was giving you their opinion. Mm. Nobody's opinion was law. Wow. All right. How did you and Will connect? Um, <coughs> I was really big in the city um, as a DJ, as a DJ period, right? and Will was in a crew. Um, mm. He was in a crew in a section city in Winfield, and you know, you know of people, mm-hmm. you know, because a lot of times we're on the same show. Um, and it was crazy because this was pre cell phone pager or any of that. So when you had to get a call because you was in the house and I got a call <laughs> like, yo, somebody wants you to do this house party on 54th and Wynwood. And I was like, cool. And in I Miami? picked up the phone and called, <laughs> yeah. There's another Wynwood. You know, picked up the phone and called the guy that used to MC for me uh-huh. and he wasn't in the house. Uh-huh. I couldn't page him or nothing. So it was kind of like, listen, I'm going to go do the party. You know, I just can't get him. And when I showed up, it was two doors down from Will's house. What and as soon as I fuck? showed up to set my stuff up, he came in the basement and it was kind of like we knew each other, dapped each other up. He was like, yo, where's your man Ice? And I was like, yo, I couldn't find him. And he was like, yo, you mind if I rock? And I was like, nah. Wow. And it was just a natural chemistry 
that we had that wow. night. That it, accident, basically. Oh, listen, I kept saying, wow. if Ice would have picked up that phone, wow. I might not be sitting here. Wow. Yo. You know? That's crazy. But it's just, you know, mm. and that, that turned into what you doing tomorrow? What are you doing next Saturday? What are you doing? And it was probably seven months later, we had a record out. Wow. What was the moment where you was like, I made it? Was it parents just don't understand? There's, there's a point in time that I still don't think I had that moment. Damn, but yeah, you, had, you had to get gas oh, at no, once. No. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. You know what I think? Um, when, we, 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 when we put out pants, I remember we had signed a rush. Mm. And, um, management or the label? And, uh, management. Okay, cool. And I remember when we played them, the He's the DJ on the Rapper album, mm. Russell listened to it, and Russell said, this is going to be gold in four weeks. And we was just like, what That's pre-Def Jam when it was Rush? Did he, did it was he had Rush that before, management. before right. Def Jam. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, and, we, and we didn't believe him. And, mm. and the record actually went gold in five weeks. Mm. But what it was, we were on tour, and it was kind of like you start the tour off in your, the third act to go on, uh -huh. and, and then, then a the week last. later you're the fourth act to go uh, on, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then a week later you're the fifth act to go on, and you're not realizing why they're moving you up. Yeah. And it was, um, we doing these shows with uh, Run DMC, and like yep. it was a, it I think was that's a, tour I was a pack about. tour, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Stadium tours? Yeah. yeah. And it was kind of like every night, you know, Will start coming to me. He's like, yo, like, is it me or is the cheers getting louder? And yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I can't tell. Like, you know, it's because <laughs> you, you, you know, you back and here. it was one night he did Parents Just Don't Understand. And he said the first verse and he told me that he was going to try something. He said the first verse and then he said in between the first and second verse, he was like, listen, I'm going to say the first line, and I want everybody to say the second line, which was really dangerous, because if nobody says shit, we would have been. Oh yeah, you look crazy. And he said, I remember one year my mom took me school shopping and 25,000 people answered me. And, and that was it. That was kind of like, because once again, when you're on the road, you don't, you know, you don't have any frame of reference yeah. if right. your record is getting big. You know, right. I know. Especially okay, back then with no yeah, social, yeah, 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 no social media. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of like, yo, like, this is crazy. You know, and it was, you know, before we end up getting off of the tour, we were right before Run DMC. Mm. That was crazy. Mm. Now, was, was it ever rough between you and Will at once? Nah, nah. Okay. You know, I mean, trust me, you have growing yeah. pains, you know, right. because we started off so young. Right. But, um, it was wild because one of the first times right after we got together, I mean, we sat on the steps mm -hmm. um, and it was wild because it was me, Will, uh, the manager, JL, and Charlie mm. Mack. Mm. Um, and yeah, Charlie Mack on yep. the show. Yeah, I saw him. Uh -huh. yeah. and, and Will was like, yo, man, I want to do movies. Wow. And I was like, I want to do music for the movies. So people would always be like, did it get strange? You, you know, did you feel like Will left you? It's like, nah, like this was planned. Wow. From day one, none of this was. Oh, so you saying when he went into music, you, you were scoring most of the movies? Well, or like, I was like, I did all of the music on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Get wow. the fuck out of here, Pete! You know? I, did, so I did see the that. The theme is you. The theme. Oh, yeah. you're still getting published, you know? God damn, let's make some noise for that. We're not going to make some noise for that. Those royalty checks was being made. I'm gonna tell you something. You know what? And somebody said this to me not too long ago, and 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 it freaked me out. He came up to me and he said, "Let me ask you a question." What is the biggest hip hop record in the world? And I started going down a list, and like Dr. Dre, Snoop, Eminem, and he was like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh. So that is the biggest. Yeah, everybody knows record that. Everybody knows that. In the record. world, it's in over a hundred and ninety countries. That's fucking ill. I didn't know. I didn't even and think I that. I never thought of that. Yeah. I never thought of that either. You know, especially when you realize you. Because was that official money record, or was that, or was that just the theme for the show? Did you actually was, drop a record? Off um, or yeah, the record a, company put something out that oh, I found out down the line. Y'all made that for the show, though. Huh? Y'all made, made that for the show. Yeah, we made it for yeah, the show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, Uncle Uncle Phil passing away. What You, you had a relationship very, with him? Very, very yeah. good. So, very and, like, good. He was like hip-hop's uncle. He, you know what? Because that um, was like our family. Like, that, yeah. they're like... The Fresh Prince of Bel Air was everybody from the projects. That's what we dreamed of of doing. Like somebody, we have enough rich family somewhere, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're gonna fly us out. Right. And we're gonna live in Bel Air, and Uncle Phil is gonna be our uncle. And um, so I think hip hop took that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah like hip hop yeah. actually. Yeah. I mean, he was he he was he was my vacation dude. Mm. That because he would you know in the off season he would just get in the car 
and him and his friends would drive from cross country and they would they he could tell you every great restaurant wow. every great beach like he they were wow. traveling so mm. you know I, I would go to him he's like yo you know the best beach in the world is in, is in Cancun and, wow. and the best restaurant is here um, but he would always pull you to the side drop some knowledge he was a huge music and jazz Mm. fans so I would always you know go in his room and he would mm. slide me new CDs and and stuff like that but he was he was he was cool he was really mm -hmm. cool now, what's what's your um, favorite era in hip-hop 90s all day 90s for well, now yeah, I'm giving you 10 years so what 90 to 2000 um, or? I would almost say no Late not necessarily 90 to 2000 I would okay. say probably uh, between 88 and 98. Yeah. Okay, 88 and 98. All right, yeah. that's a fucking phenomenal year. That's a great decade that's, right uh, there. Yeah, that's a great decade. So we're, let's, let's take 88. That's NWA for sure. Yeah, Public mm -hmm. Enemy. Uh, yeah. Nas falls in there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Rakim is in there. Yep. Okay, uh, RS is in there. Yep. Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang Wu -Tang came out in 92. So Wu-Tang is the discovery of Wu-Tang. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What's something that, that, uh, that shocked you in hip-hop? Where you sat back and you was like, I can't believe hip-hop went this far. Um, Cause you come well, from the morals. Yeah, but you, you know what, you know what it is. It's kind of like w when you come from the morals, you saw how it got immoral. Mm. No one gave a shit about hip hop mm. until they realized that hip hop was making money. Mm. When we boycotted the Grammys, yeah. it was mm. because you wanted to put it on television or you wanted to exploit it on television, but you didn't want to show the category. And I'm like, wait a minute. Hip hop is arguably hip hop was arguably, and I want to say this might have been eighty eight, right. arguably the top three music yep. genre in the world. If you got nine country and western categories that you're televising, then you're gonna televise one of these hip hop categories. Mm. Because on the scale, it, it should be up there. Every hip hop category in should be up there based off of the, the level of the music. And so for them to kind of disrespect it, and this was at a point in time that you had radio and talk show hosts that were blatantly saying hip hop is a fad, it's a fad, gonna die. Yeah, yeah. So you're, so you're saying in 88 y'all got together and y'all boycotted the Grammys. We boycotted y'all did that first that before Damon deal, yeah. them, right? Huh? I know Damon them did it after. Yeah. But this is 88. So this can you describe us? We were just, you know, we okay. got together Salt and Pepper, everybody who was nominated, and we were just right. like, we're not going. We're gonna go to all of the functions. And we're going to talk about why right. we're not going because they not only were we nominated, but they wanted me and Will to perform. Wow. So we were like, nah, and understand at that time saying no, you don't know if this is the kiss of death. Like, right. are you in a position to say no that, that yeah. they, they're just going to say, you know, but everybody kind of band together. Um, and that's why, you know, hip hop has kind of for, right. for a while kind of right. gotten to be a staple in the Grammys. Right. But you also watched when you started when people started making real money mm. in hip hop mm. and they started noticing, when mm. it got to a point that somebody like MC Hammer mm -hmm. sold 12 million records and now, you know, through media, you're starting to see the, the fruits of his labor more, mm. then people, then you start to realize corporate America is mm. going to turn in. It's no different than the DJ culture. I, you mm. know, I've been DJing for 30 something years. Right. So being inside the bubble, before the bubble, got big, you got DJs that are making $600,000 a night? Yeah. Wow. A, a night? A night. Yeah. I'm like, yo. But all of that happened when corporate America realized as soon as you put Calvin Harris made $67 million in Forbes, now everybody wants to be a DJ. Right. Because mm. it's kind of, now it's big business. Mm. Okay. So you start, you know, I think, I, I think there's a level of hip hop that does not belong to hip hop. I believe you. And, I, I and believe. like subgenre type stuff. Ju well, just I, you know what? I don't believe that. I don't believe that a lot of the commercial hip hop that's on the radio is 100% picked by the fans. Right. No, no, for sure. Okay. No, like I know some, what you mean. like, yeah. like, trust me, they're just they're, like programming on radio. They had a all, formula yeah, for all that. This. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's almost like they're they're never gonna say it, but. We, we let you hear what we want you to hear. Right. Like, that's why the underground has always been a certain level of purity right. because you can't really control that. Like, you got to seek mm -hmm. and look for stuff. But the stuff... You're saying, like, a label can pay for who's the next all, guy. All, all day. Yeah. 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 yeah, all day. Which is terrible. You know, but it's just kind of like yeah. you don't realize that you don't have that level of control, right. but that level of control is only because of the money. 
as a DJ, have you ever, um, has a, a, a person ever came up to you and said, yo, I want to pay you to play my records every time you spin? Like, no, I mean, no. I, and, I, and I've been fortunate enough right. to keep myself right. out of them circles, right. you know, that it's just kind of like... Because that's what's the new thing now. A DJ is kind of big, an artist just go to them, pay the DJ, give them three grand, and the DJ playing them, and then... And he's the only DJ playing him, so it's kind of like you know, <laughs> you know he got him you know, because it's like no one else is playing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, I think that lowers the integrity of a DJ. How about you, EFN? Like, I, I'm sorry. Has it happened to me? Has it, like, so, you know, you, you was DJing a lot yeah, in, no, in, in Miami. Yeah, me a couple times. And a person yeah. came up to you and was like, yo, I'll offer you yeah. a, uh, describe. You don't have to blow I'm going to tell you the artist. But you know, don't, please, yeah, you don't have like, to. Yo, I'll you give you a 1K yeah. right now, just uh. run my record. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That happened often. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. But you know, they're doing that now, like, I think all this we're talking now about- Now it's up front. Is, yeah, but it's, now it's like, social media is almost becoming the DJ too. Now they're paying people on social yeah. media to do something to a record, or play a record, like- Oh, yeah. Post. Yeah. Hey, I, I heard they um paying people to stream records now. Right. So there's uh, like companies in Japan- and, that Yeah, get, and everything he's saying about like how people aren't really choosing anything. Algorithms is the same thing. Like, you think you're picking something, but it's being chosen for you. But, but uh, is, is it our choice to turn on the radio? And to know these songs because some of these songs I hate, but I know every word of them. Listen, you can be force fed. Yeah, I'm force fed. Yeah, that's what, yeah. that's, that's yeah, what I'm telling that's you. Programming. A programmer yeah. told me that they actually have a mathematical equation yes. right. that they know if they play a record a certain amount of times in a You'll span of the day, it's going to get stuck in your head. Mm. Yep. Mm. Have you uh, been disgusted from hip hop yet? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. All the time. <laughs> Too positive, he don't say no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Too positive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all, the, the funny thing is, I think I've been just disgusted right. at some level of it from the beginning. Wow. Like, there's a, listen, there's always been a good side and a bad side. I said that. Man. There's okay. always. Yeah. Like, I'm like, yo, this didn't just start mm. that it was bad hip hop. It was bad hip hop in the 90s. I said that, yep, yep, yep. You know, but it's just. It was it, so it, much you, more good that you, you didn't yeah, care about. You, you never almost felt to like. Huh. The, the, the good outweighed the bad. Mm -hmm. You but know, see, now... That, I, I, that's why I have a problem with saying subgenres in, in hip-hop. I think it should just be good hip-hop and bad hip-hop. No, nah, I don't think because, you can't no, call because it good I think and bad. You start though. making excuses for shit. You know, like, oh, nah, because this is, I'm this genre of hip-hop. This is why you, you, I do this type of shit. You know why I can't shit. say good and bad? Because... Just because I don't like it doesn't no, it's mean it's bad. It's subjective. That's subjective. No, yeah, no, I'm saying yeah. it's subjective. I'm not okay. saying that it, okay. it, it's automatic. Right. It's whatever you think is good and bad. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah, I still, I, I don't want to call it bad because I don't like it. Like, there's certain people, there's certain artists that I don't like them, but I get why other people like them. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, so I don't want, I wouldn't want to call them bad. I don't, but I, I, I can't, I can never criticize somebody that I don't like. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't eat cheese. Right. I don't think mm. people who eat cheese are bad. Mm. It's just something that I don't do. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like, you know, if it's stuff that you don't do. Now it gets a little interesting as a right. DJ, you have, you gotta you figure gotta out. You gotta But you gotta, you gotta figure out. I, right. you know, Curating. I, you, you, yeah, you know, mm. and, and there's some people that won't draw the line, you right. know, or, or draw a hard line at right. curating. And, right. you know, I think it's, once again, it's subjective. It's kind of like, what you know? What type of DJ are you? you I, 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 but that's I, why the DJ is its own entity. It's an artist because then yeah. people buy into what your taste is. Yes, you have a DJ right. and then somebody came up to you and was like, "Play some Takashi Six <laughs> Nine." Nah, you know what? Because <laughs> once again, if you're smart, you know how to navigate yourself that right. you're not putting yourself right. in them situations. I, I I had a Vegas residency for seven years. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. me and DJ Am. Mm -hmm. You know, had great times in Vegas Listen, because yeah. we would push the Less envelope. It was, yeah. you know, right. like I, I always had a massive level of respect for him. I never forget one of the first times that I went to Vegas and he was playing and I walked in and it's 2000 people. It's 1.30 right. at night. And he was like, yo, did you, did you hear the new Bob Deep record? And I was right. like, no. Nah. And he right. was like, yo. Right. And I said, what the fuck are you doing? In the middle of a set. Like he just dropped it. <laughs> But uh, I, there was a level of respect that right, I had for that. Uh, that he's kind of like, yo, I'm the DJ. I'm the train conductor. Right, right, Everybody's right. on my train. They're going to yeah. go wherever right. I take them. Right. You know, and, and you respected that. But you also saw throughout the years, Vegas change. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, they, they got a list. 
this is what we want you to play. Mm. I, 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 oh, listen, uh, I played Vegas. I, I was about to ask you, have you ever had to play a record that you didn't like, but you knew that th- this was popping for the crowd? Oh, I do that all the time. Okay. I do that, but, but like I said, it's, right. which is a whole nother conversation. Right. You got to understand the, the, the definition, the, 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 the goal of the DJ or the, the, the job description of the DJ is you are a servant of the people. Right. You're not a servant of yourself. Right. So didn't y'all have like beef with MC Search or some shit like that? No, Search no. not, man. Where did no. you hear that? I don't know, I forgot. Y'all, y'all had beef with somebody. Like, we, somebody got like, we got to have some beef with somebody. Y'all had beef with somebody, man. Come on. They ain't had no beef with man, nobody, man. You, you, you really could get through hip hop like that? Listen, it ain't over. It ain't over, it's true. That's true, that's true. <laughs> it ain't that over. That is true, that is true. That is true. You know? that is true. So like, you know, um, you speaking on when you first, uh, Matt Will, right? Um, he is uh, a elite, uh, like you know, of our people, right? Like this, ne- there probably won't ever be a Will Smith. Did you see that from the beginning? All day. Get the fuck out. All of day, all day. Um, one of the first shows that we did, mm-hmm. I used to play Art of Noise Moments in Love, mm-hmm. and he would do Girls Ain't Nothing But Trouble over there. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching three hundred people stare at his mouth hanging on every word of a story because they're visualizing the story. And I was like, that's power. Wow. When you can communicate like that, that's wow. power. Wow. And, like all day. And you knew he would he would be this guy. Like, you know, the, the, some of the movies, because at the end of the day, he represents hip hop, right? And like, I love the fact, like, you know, um, somebody I idolize because I wanted to continue to, to be involved with hip hop, but I wanted to do other mm-hmm. things. I just wanted to do it my way. Yep. So I'm doing it my version like of it. Like an ambassador. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But when you look at like like some of the movies he did, like where he's crying on impulse, I'm like, how the fuck do you do that? <laughs> like, like, Listen, like, like, I seen him do that with his girl back in the day. Oh shit. What you mean? What you mean? What you mean? Listen, I seen him get in some trouble right. and he, and he just, cried and I said, how the did you do? <laughs> I'll be in the mirror trying to squint my eye. I, I, like I was like, yo, like that's. Uh, I don't know how you did that. But I was like, you got, you got out of that. <laughs> like I'm spitting on my hand, running around here. Like so, yeah. Like he you had see, it. You see that from back then? Oh yeah. And this, oh, is, this yeah. is this is pre-record deal. I'm he sorry. Was, this he was crying pre-record deal. What? Oh! Will Listen, is hell. You know, yeah. I, was, I was like, you the best that ever did it. <laughs> and that is acting. That is acting is acting on impulse. That like, is it. That that's something straight. I tried to do that shit. I can't I ain't got it. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> I ain't you act like yourself. Yeah, yeah, I tried to get like yeah. mad and shit, think about like past <laughs> steps and shit like that. It wasn't working for me. That's why I knew I ain't got it, man. I ain't got it. But yeah, certain people could do that. But I just, you know, for hip hop, him, LL, mm-hmm. Ice Cube. I like look at and you know a lot of times you know people claim them as actors yeah. and I'll be wanting to stop them like uh uh-uh. uh yeah like they hip hop yeah. first like yeah. you know what I'm saying like they hip hop absolutely and yeah. um to see the to, to see the to, the position that you know um they've taken it to for us to continue to go it's just amazing man it's it just, was it was hard in the beginning because right. people people like fought hear. that. Right. They fought for, that. For like the fact when, that he was well, when 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 he got the TV show, it was a lot of backlash because, From for who? some reason, just the industry, hip hop industry. The, oh, the, okay. You know, be, um, and because and he was the first one on the, TV, right? Then LL yeah. was was but Will. It was like first, we were right? selling out. No, it wasn't even selling out. It was almost like we we had this weird thing that people thought you can only do one thing. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Like it was like you're hip hop and you're yeah. gonna be hip hop until the day that you die. It's kind yeah, of like, right. yo, I like other stuff. Right. You know, like, and all of that stuff is super accepted now. Mm. I wasn't accepted in the beginning. Right. Like, like you, people fought and just, like, you you trying to act? Like, what are you doing? Because I, like, it was you guys, Latifah. Latifah was doing yep. that, too. And I remember, like, people saying, like, but they, but they were using, like, they, they're sellouts. Like, they were using those words because. I mean, but you know what? It's be, a lot you of know that what that, is, I mean, yeah. back in the days when they were saying sellout, that meant you was getting money. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's yeah. what I noticed about when they was, like, they were haters back in the days. Like, if you was a sellout, that means you was rich. Let's make yeah. some noise for that, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, no. talking about the show, one of my favorite songs of all time is Summertime. Mm-hmm. So, oh, wow. Talk to us about the making. Did you guys know that record was going to be as big as it became? No, nah. 
No, not at all. I remember <laughs> watching the video for the first time on the show when it yeah. was like an in, intermission in, 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 or something like that. Let me that. just tell you something. I judge people barbecues by that <laughs> video. <laughs> Based on if they play summertime or not, nigga. If they don't play summertime, I, your food is trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit got nothing to do with nothing else, my dude. But if I don't hear summertime, I automatically yeah. just put your food down. I'm sorry. I throw it out there. Let me, yeah. I'm sorry. I got, I got a little taste. I'm with go you. Go ahead, go ahead. I mean, you know, we, um, it was funny. That was the first year that Will was on the show. Mm. Um, and, you know, we East Coast. Mm. Fall, leaves turn brown, get a little chilly, throw your jacket on. Winter, snow, you got your bomber ski hat. Mm -hmm. Spring. You know, first day of spring is 70 degrees. We go overboard and we want to throw some shorts on and mm. think, think, think it's hot. But mm -hmm. you see the girl that you ain't seen all summer and she got a little thick. Mm -hmm. Your man got a new car and he, mm. done, he now is shining. Mm. And what happened was he was in L.A. So it was 90 right. mm. in, the, in, in the winter. Mm. So I remember him calling me in the spring. You know, the first nice day we had, it was just like, yo, what's up? And I'm just like, yo, such and such, but she, boy, she's stacked now. And mm. such and such got a new car, mm. and such and such, you know. And he was like, damn, I missed that. Like, and I never thought about that. Like, yo, you don't get the seasons changing. Mm. So you don't have that nostalgia. It's a little bit different. You mm. know, a, a, you know, it's, it's 90, Christmas. Yeah. yeah. So that was the inspiration that it was mm. like, yo, like, I'm, I miss summertime in Philly. I miss these nuances. And it was crazy because not realizing that every place has their own nuance. Right. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to be what he talked about. Right. Um, yeah, that's a universal record. And it was kind of like we put the record out and, you know, it was everybody loved it in that the summer. That was an instant hit, yeah. You right. know, but then what happened was the next summer came and you was kind of like, okay, that shit is over with. And then it's kind of like, it's here again. Word. And then the next summer came and it was it was here again. And it was kind of like to me as an artist, we dream to have something that never dies. Right. Yes. You dream to have that legacy record that, you know, well, summertime is going to be 3000 years old. Yeah. 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 It's going to still like, be and, popping. And you can't you, you can't plan. We could go to like, Mars. That's, that's a gift. We could go to Mars. We can still we can still here summertime. All right. I'm going to be honest. I'll tell you the truth, man. I'll tell you the truth. That is a universal. Uh, today's a good day. Ice Cube. Yep. That's yeah. one of them. Whenever you have a good day, whenever like shit is real, like you just got to listen to Ice Cube. Yeah. But I'm talking about when you know that it's spring is like, because there's a certain smell. Yeah. Spring is leaving. And when you know where summer is coming. And I just need to hear that. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, it's and you got to hear it in somebody's car. I did, down the car. street. See, I'm a barbecue guy. Me too. So I got the hair in the barbecue. I'm gonna throw it out there, man. I take it personal. So, uh, so you guys, uh, uh, you, you go on tour. Uh, he, he does uh, the, the, the Fresh Prince. Then he starts going into, into movies. What was his first one? Independence Day. Um, no, he did. The, his first movie was. Uh, I want to say this movie called Where the Day Takes You, mm. but I think he played a, a, a homeless man. But it was kind of like his first, like trying to get in, getting into it. And then um, he did uh, the thing with Nia and Ted dancing and Whoopi Goldberg. I forgot the name of that. Oh yeah. Um, but it was just you know you started seeing, mm. you started seeing the roles come in. Um, that's that the first he, time hip hop is actually entering movie world. Yeah, yeah, to that level. Right. Because you know it was funny. Um, you know there was a bunch of people that kind of came up. Queen Latifah's doing it, but she's doing yeah. it on the other side for the females, And this is correct? before Boys in the Hood and all that, and, and yeah. Cube doing it, and Ice-T was doing some mm. stuff. Yeah. What year is Boys in the Hood, Cass? Ricochet came out around. New Jack, but, but New there's Jack no rapper. Ice-T is in New Jack yeah. City. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, I see what we But we're going. New Jack City came out, I mean, we went to the screen in New Jack City mm. on the set of Fresh Prince. Mm. So it was kind of like everybody was trying to get their right. feel, you know. And then it was, I think what it was, we were also stereotyped as rappers that it's kind of like you got to play the role that Ice-T played different for him. in New Jack right. City. Right. Um, and I think, um, you know, Will would kind of play this funny guy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I remember when he did that movie, um, Six Degrees of Separation. Mm. Um, and yeah. I remember him talking about like, yo, I'm tr there's certain, you know, black directors and people that I want to work with that I can't seem to break through. And when he did 
that movie. That movie was so far left. Mm. And he did such a great job that it separated him from everybody else. Mm. That it got to the point that it's kind of like now I'm getting calls from everybody. Mm. But I remember, you know, when, when, when he did that was probably one of the first times that I realized how in depth being an actor is. Because that was like when he played like a gay, like something yeah, like a gay, like the but white it was, guy. It was crazy uh-huh. because we were going through a little bit of a friction. Mm-hmm. And the, the mood that he had to get in to play that role mm-hmm. offered a lot of compassion. Mm-hmm. And that kind of enabled us to sit down and squash whatever friction that we had. Mm. But it was wild because he was like, yo, you know, like, sometimes you go these places and you you don't know how to get back. You know, because, you know, like it's the whole thing that, you know, like they said, Denzel becomes well, every character yeah, right. he is. I watched that with Will. Yeah. I watched they get in the entire indeed. time that Will did Ali. He never spoke to me out of Ali's cab. <laughs> and it was the weirdest <laughs> shit in the world. That's method the phone acting, right? It's called method Listen, acting. he yeah. would talk to me to the point that I had to get off the phone uh. because he would talk to me as like, Ali. Like a motherfucker. Man- mannerisms <laughs> and all. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I, you know, you laugh it off because I'm uh. waiting for you to break. Uh. And he would <laughs> he never break. And I, all right, I'll call you back. Click, uh. you know. <laughs> but you realize how deep you got to get into that. Right, right. Yeah, that's method acting. I think it's called. Yeah, that's crazy. I was on a set with some dude, method acting. It's not pretty. It's not that cool. Cause like he was a dick in the movie, so he had to be a dick. Like like so this dude is just walking around. Rah, rah, rah. Hey, your homeboy, you gotta relax, man. <laughs> this, this shit is great set cut already. All right. <laughs> that, was, that was another game. My my bad. That's my my story. But yeah, like the level that that he has helped open up for you guys because this yeah. yes y'all mm-hmm. like to see together is that. Like I like I went to uh, the, the party. It was a Netflix party that he had. Um, that he um, LA, the, right? the shit that the new movie he had just had, yeah, right? Yeah, the bright. And it was crazy. And I walk, I walked in, and I'm talking about there were so many white people. God bless these white people. <laughs> God, God bless these white people. There were so many white people. But I'm looking, and I'm like, do they know about you know? Yeah, and I'm look, and this is also, it was, it was, it was real funny for me because I said, what's up, Will? You said, you're Nori. I said, this nigga knew, I said, you know Nori. Come on. Because like, you know, fuck, I don't think the nigga know me. Well, <laughs> 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 it was hilarious, man. I ain't going to lie. I love, I love what you guys did for hip hop. You know what I mean? Because you guys took chances. You guys took risks. You guys made global music first. You guys put it on the front that, you know, you know uh, 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 what was going on, and was it you stood you stood who you guys were to the test of time, and look at look at your career, look at your legacy. You guys should be saluted every day, every day. You should say it's me, Jazzy Jeff, motherfucking day. God damn it, God damn it. Come on. The legacy is so rich. So why do you still DJ? You still love, love it. it. You still do? I love it, man. Okay. I, I, I DJ more now than I ever did in my entire... I work more now than I ever worked in my life. Wow. Ever. Wow. Ever. ever. And, and, and it's because... It's, it's because it's the, is it the, the feeling that you're addicted is to? Is it the same let me, feeling that you Let me ask you, you a question. Uh-huh. I'm not talking the music business or uh-huh. any of that. Uh-huh. Are you smarter than you were when you put out your first album? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you think you, you, you're more lyrical than you are? Is your vocabulary grown since you put out your first album? Probably not. I'm probably a weird nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm different. I'm different. I'm different. I might have got stupid. I might have I got dumb with my vocabulary. But everything else I got smarter. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. I mean, it's kind of like yeah. Um, yeah. You, you, you know how to navigate it. Exactly. exactly. You, know, you, know, you know how to maneuver mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That it's kind of like... See, for me, for an artist, I, I, got, I got tired of being on stage. See, DJ, y'all control the stage on the low. If you actually think what you said when you first said, you said it's a wizard. And that's the best way to kind of describe a DJ. You guys are in there with your wands. That's your wand. <laughs> but see, to, for me to stay in there and just have to keep entertaining people for a certain amount of time, I kind of yeah. like outgrew that. Not, not in a bad way, because yeah. I still love to perform. I don't yeah. ever want people to get that misconstrued. Right. But, you know... It's, 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 it, gets, it gets redundant, yep. you know what I'm saying? Because we're, and a lot of times, we're like the entertainment. It's, not, no, it's no difference between us and a stripper. You know what I'm saying? Like a stripper goes and dances, and like I was just saying, she takes the ass, and then gets off the stage and hates it. I hope you ain't getting no shame, <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just saying, sometimes yeah. as an artist, you you perform. I, I'm gonna tell you, I, I said this story before, but I'm gonna tell you, this is the one time I this is I, I kind of stopped performing. I have one of the most beautiful times I've ever had at Hamptons. And we're sitting there, we're smoking. I smoke, this is when I smoke cigarettes. And the guy, he paid me, of course, he paid me. So he says, hey, you ready? Let's go. And I was like, whoa! <laughs> it was just how he said, he meant yeah. no harm. Right. He meant no harm, he meant no disrespect, but just, yeah, just, yeah. just, you understand what I'm yeah, saying? He said, yeah. are you ready? Let's go. He didn't even make eye contact with me. Yeah, yeah. I said, hold yeah, up, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I don't work for you. Even though I had his money in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> you were work for hire that day. I was work for hire yeah. that day, and that's when I stopped slowing down yeah. doing shows. And I smoked two more bogeys. This makes some noise for me. <laughs> this makes some noise for me. I, I can't let him have that. Yeah, yeah. I can't let him have that. I said, you're going to have to wait another 20 minutes. Damn, Russia didn't do it for you when we went to Russia? Russia, they almost killed us. Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah they almost killed yeah, us in Russia. Yeah, yeah. Russia. Mm. I ain't gonna lie, we was in a part of Russia. This is how you know. Where we it. are at? St. Petersburg, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah. But at the time, I don't know if it changed, but at the time, it was so racist that the Russians that was with us had to wear buttons that said Russians against, against racism. racism. You know you in a racist wow. race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When the people gotta say, we ain't dumb. <laughs> That was terrible, yeah, man. Was insane, man. <laughs> that was insane. We've been through some shit, man. God bless you, guys. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah, but um, as an artist, I, I kind of, I kind of feel like, I, you know, I've seen, you know, I've seen the, you know, uh, what was I don't, what Tip Trill and you know all of like the famous strippers. They always come to Miami <laughs> and people always go see them. And I always, you know, every now and then I'll go and oh, let's, let's see. Uh, you know, I'm married, man, so I just watch. You know, uh, but <laughs> no, I'm serious. But you know. And then you see these strippers that will perform, and they're the happiest while there's someone's throwing dollars on them. And then they turn around, and then they, they throw on this ice grill. And it's similar to how a person who has to perform, yeah. performs. You know, because there's certain people who have to. Like, there's certain people who, like, you know, you know, you see them, you're like, this nigga, this nigga, you know. But then there's people who just, they love it. And when you outgrow it, you gotta, you gotta fall in love back with it, or yeah. you're gonna be the stripper. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just tell you, you're gonna be the stripper that walks off and be like, man, man, these niggas keep throwing money at me. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, I don't know where the fuck I went with this, man. Shit got weird, man. Let me drink, let me drink some more champagne. I'm relating to strippers and shit. Shit is crazy. I think the difference is what you were saying. It's it's the difference between wanting to do it yes. and have to do it. Yeah. No. Having to do no, it. No, when you when you when you when you want to do something, like he was saying, like you develop more love for it, you develop more skills for it. Like um I, I you know, uh I, I remember speaking to Buster one time, and Buster said to me, he said, he don't I don't do no 90s parties. And I had to ask him, I said, why? He said, because if I do a, a 90s party, that's where they want to keep me at. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's, do you think that's uh, uh Like he true? feels he's going to be pigeonholed to that? I mean, in Buster's case, I'm not saying in Buster's case, I'm saying in your case, like, or in, 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 in your case. You I think? do whatever. Okay. Yeah. Like, okay. it's kind of like the, the, the thing about that, if you do a 90s party, just do your 90s shit. Yeah, right. You that's know, not, that, uh, you don't have to do that everywhere. Mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, we, I, I pretty much know what I'm going into t to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. I know how how deep I got to go. I know how much is it me doing what I do and how much is it I have to split what I do to mm -hmm. what you want. Mm -hmm. So you kind of you kind of know that. So I, I knock on wood. I'm never going into something blind. Right. You know. You talk about DJing your, your just, crowd? Just completely. Like, listen, okay. I do uh, 160, 170 dates a year. God damn, you touring like a wrestler. You Let's know. make some noise. Okay. <laughs> that, that, is, that is wrestler dates, brother. That is getting a lot of money. We, we respect that. Keep it you, sir. But you know, it's, huh. it's, it's, uh, you understand, you know, like I know what this club is going to be like right. to a certain degree. Like I got, I got a range that it's going to be here and here, you know. I know when I go overseas and I do these tours, like this is, this is where I'm at, you know. I know, you know, you do the bottle service, your range might have to be a little bit shifted to the left. Right. You know, I go to Germany, I know my shit is shifted to the right, okay. mm. you know, right. and you just and you just kind of know like that's that's your job is to kind of figure out your environment. You that's know, the illest thing about being a DJ is y'all niggas are geniuses. Y'all can actually go Some out of there. Them. Listen, my DJ, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I, I know enough, I never t said this story. 
But Butch Rod used to always go to my shows 30 minutes before and tell me, because you know, I got Spanish records, I got fucking, you know, CNN records, right. I got Nori records. So my DJ would go and he would study the crowd mm -hmm. out for a half an hour. But this one time, we didn't go early. <laughs> <laughs> we went on time and we were late. So on time is late. And mm -hmm. I kid you not, God bless his soul. Prodigy was out there on stage, but he had a dat. So he must have came as DJ, him and Havoc's, D, I think DJ missed the flight. Mm. So I had never knew popcorn fly. They do popcorn. I was like, I'm not going out there. <laughs> I said, no way. If they throwing popcorn at P, mm, they gonna destroy me. <laughs> this is the God at the time. My DJ, in my mind, he, I don't think he did it, but in my mind, he smacked me and said, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> You're going out there! And it's the first time we started with Super Thug. Super Thug was our, our closer. What, what, what? And he was like, shut up! <clears throat> Uh, in my mind, he smacked me. I'm sure he did. <laughs> <Much doing that. laughs> I'm sure he was like, "Shut up!" And just and he never gave me the list. We didn't go over no records. Right. He just went out there and he went to all the number one. Like you know, you, you, the ones yeah. you saved. Yeah. And we went through those first five. But the crowd started loving. All night, the promoter was, was like, was, he was with us all night. You saved the show. Yeah, a Russian guy. <laughs> he just kept putting his hands on my head and my neck. Come on, let's see the show. Yo, my buddy, come on. But, uh, that's it. That's why, I, that's why I love, like, a good DJ will sit there and say, yo, I know exactly what you, like sometime, one time I was in Germany and everybody in the crowd was from Honduras. I had no idea. From Honduras? <laughs> from Honduras. What? It in made Germany? no sense. It made no sense. But my DJ, my DJ was in the crowd and knew that. And he played my Spanish records and I killed the crowd. Let's make some noise. There you go. In Germany, performing Spanish music. I'm sorry, man. I go on. I go yeah, I think, I I think if I'm not wrong, is that crazy name track back there? Oh, let's do it. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on, man. Hey, Trap, what's going on? I seen you the other day. Uh, that's right. That's all. That's all. Yeah. Craig, what's going on, baby? Yeah, good to see man, you. Man, real DJ shit, man. Yes, what yeah. up, brother? Real DJ. What's good, though? Real DJ shit, man. Well, you know how much I listen to Every time I see you, I tell you I listen to every episode. Oh, man. Oh, man. Listen, you, you guys got any questions for, for, for come on. I know, I know oh, he got to be my inspiration to y'all, uh, to me, to, to y'all, you know? No, man, listen, you don't He's understand. One these, these oh, let's guys. make some noise for that. Yeah. It's like on that career... Path. Right, right. Yeah. That's what we were saying. The longevity, the, uh, the long. Yeah, you can speak into here. Uh, somebody can give him a chair. Fuck it, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. We are organized, but organized. Come on, work with us. Work with us. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, we got one back there. This guy's incredible, man. We 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 we, we, we salute our legends over here, and it'd be something, you know. And these guys are legends in the legends too. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Exactly. Crazy is the pride of Miami, right here. That's right. Man, and, and listen, I didn't start as young as A Track. So Wow. How old young yeah. did you start, A Track? I, I started at thirteen. Man, I was being on shit, yo. Wow. Yeah. Wait a minute. World champion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick that up. Whoa. <laughs> so yeah, pick that up. That's wait, right. wait, wait. Tell me what the fuck you world champion at. <laughs> what was that? I think I was. DJ, 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 Good at first, right. you got to be good to get paid, right? Because there's a lot of locals yeah. that don't really get paid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? But you know what? Shout out, shout out to the shout local out to the locals. DJs. Yeah. yeah. Big them up. Down the, yeah, 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 yeah. Big up to all the club DJs and yeah. all the, the DJs that have residencies every week because they mm -hmm. hold down mm -hmm. their market and their their job is actually tougher than ours, I think, because <laughs> if they don't like Jeff was talking about being a servant to the crowd. Right. You know, at least we have the luxury 
to have a certain weight to our name so when we show up in the venue, right. we can still steer it where we want. Right. But if you're the resident DJ at the club and you're not playing what the crowd wants, you ain't got leave. no steering wheel. Mm. They'll, they'll mm. leave, they'll leave the dance floor, the manager will take you off. Like, so let me ask y'all something. That, like, put let their me, job on let me ask y'all something. As like, as like the, y'all are the closer DJs, right? So is there a rule, like if the opener DJ comes, is, is there records that he shouldn't play? It used to be at the there's, end of that. There's a, there's like a, a, I'm old school. I'm no, people tell me I'm old school. No, 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 no. But I'm saying is there should be, but now we see a lot yeah. of people that don't really respect that. So so yeah. if the number one record is out and the, the opener DJ, he, he can play it and you guys won't take it? Well, I'm going to tell you what the difference is, okay. is especially these guys, right. what you do is the number one record. Mm. Like it's not the record. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, mm. there's a level that I'm coming to see Craze. I'm coming mm. to see a track. I'm not mm. necessarily coming to see what Craze and a track are going to play. Right. Like, mm. they're the entity yeah. of mm. themselves. Mm. That is kind of like when you get to that level, you mm. almost are kind of like, I don't give a fuck what you play. Mm. These guys are instruments, man, the way that they play. Mm. I don't care what you play. But not just that. It's kind of like I've seen both of these guys play numerous mm. of times. There's a million fucking records. Mm. Yeah. I'm not going to be mad because you played. One of the records, and I had that with somebody, that they had a pre something mapped out set. Mm. And I played a couple of records and it was like, you freaked out. And I was just like, fucking replace them. Right. Like if you play this, <laughs> I'm gonna play something different. Like you looked at it, you know what I mean? Like it's not like I'm going on stage and I'm performing one of Jay-Z's records before right. Jay-Z. It's right. like. Yeah. Cause certain DJs used to, Fax a list to venues. That Meaning, say, do oh, yeah, do yeah. not. Oh, like, yeah. you book yeah. such and such in your city as like the promoter or the or the club owner or whatever. You would receive a list of records to give to your opener to say, do not play yeah. the records from this list. Or you felt wow. disrespected if the opener did play it. Yeah, but like, that's, that's also because before Serato and all of that, yeah. as the DJ would travel to your city yeah. with whatever, <laughs> three crates of records, right. and that's and they, all he had. Yeah. Right. So if the yeah. DJ before played a couple of those records, you're like, yo, this, I don't have other stuff to play. So that's changed with the digital age. Holy moly. I love uh, the DJ politics, by the way. I, I have a question for Jeff yeah. I, on that topic of like playing to the crowd and traveling and everything. Like, I know one thing that I'm sure we've all noticed is like, in the, in the last 10 plus years, once you know, blogs and the internet and everything uh-huh. really connected the whole world. And this, it got to a point where, you know, youth culture in North America, Europe, Asia, Latin America, Af- Africa, everyone has been listening to the same records at the same right. time right. through the internet, right? But I remember early, even my early trips to certain parts of Asia where I would play, start playing the crowd and being like, oh shit, they, <laughs> I don't even know what records they know and like. Mm. So like for you, Jeff, what was that like going to certain You know tip? what? It, it, I, I've i always had tunnel vision. Mm. Right, wrong, or indifferent. It's kind of mm. like I am, the, I am the steak, baked potato, and salad that you get in the restaurant. I'm going to give you this shit every <laughs> night. <laughs> if you book steak, baked potato, and salad, you're going to get it. Right. And it's kind of right. like, you know, sometimes, you know, there were times that it, it didn't, Right. You know, Sense. but for the most part, it's kind of like I believe that, you know, if, if people are booking you for you. That's right. That it's kind of like, you know, right. and, and especially you really got to stick to I'm going to do me when I don't know what this is. Mm. Right. When you are unsure, the mm. one thing that you are sure of is yourself. Then mm. it's kind of like I don't know what language they're speaking, but I'm a fucking play biggie. I'd imagine, I'd, imagine, I'd imagine it was similar to what you were saying that you guys felt about New York. You had this perception. I'm sure when yeah. you go to these places in that era, they just had a perception. They just, they just wanted Jazzy Jeff there playing. But um, let me tell me, because you guys as DJs, is this record, I don't know who sings it. I don't know what they're saying. I like it. I just don't know. Am I on point? It goes, ma, and then, and then, and then, and then, <laughs> is that one of the hottest records out? Yeah, it has to be. Right here. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what he's saying, but I mean, I, I'm like, what's going on? I don't, I can't understand. But it says Mobamba, so Mobamba. That's what they talking about. Yo, Mobamba. <laughs> 
and if I'm not mistaken, I think the title is after the dude that plays oh, yeah. for the man, uh, the uh, Orlando. Yeah. That's his man. Oh. So he named it after his man, oh. who's a basketball, who's a rookie. Yeah. And now yeah. he's, he's just like Shaq and Mobamba. I think mm. it's the school together. Oh, okay. Or mm. Or mm. So and then Shaq named the record after. Now, you messing with uh, Kanye. What was your affiliation with Kanye in the uh, film? Uh, official tour DJ. Bro. Tour Both DJ. Both of you guys, right? You did too, right? Chris okay. came in after I left. <laughs> yeah. I, when I, I left when I started Pool's Gold, mm-hmm. and I, I told Ye, I'm not just going to leave you high and dry. I'm going to give you the best DJ in the world. Chris mm-hmm. came in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everybody, for that. That's brotherhood. Thanks, everybody. So now, um... How is it, how, how is it, how is both of you guys been on, on tour with Kanye for our fans who, who probably won't know or ever get a chance to imagine that? Who's breathing that hard? You need guys. Whoever's <laughs> <laughs> doing that hard. Whoever's breathing that hard, man. I'm just telling you, you masturbate way too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I mean, I just did one year, so okay. like, mine was in and out. And, like, oh, yeah? I, I couldn't. DJ fam anymore because I was just like I wanted to be my world. Oh yeah. And I feel like when when you came in, some the, like the staging changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was lucky because I came in right at the start. Like when I when I got the job, college dropout had just came out, mm. and if you went to see a show, it was Yay, me and John Legend on stage, mm. and that was it. Mm. I would play the tracks. John would you know play piano on top, sing, mm. and the show was us. And it was a really cool experience because. Uh, we all kind of grew together. And mm-hmm. then when Ye decided to bring in a string section, he would have me speak to the string section and kind of like... I'm oh, sorry, was this like orchestrated? orchestrated? Oh. Yeah, orchestra. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, oh, I had wow. to learn how to like talk to a harpist. <laughs> oh, <wow>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the part <laughs> where you the So the learning process mm-hmm. was cool. And like, we all come from a very, you know, from like an underground hip hop mm. place. Where, mm. and, I th- and I think all of us started with battles also. So mm-hmm. our first couple years, we were, we were performing to an audience that was like sort of in on the joke, like an mm. audience that knows everything that we know. They know the right. same codes. Mm. They had seen other DJs that were as technical as us. So we're sort of preaching to the choir. But this is the pink polo Kanye era, right? Right, right. So mm-hmm. and I'm saying like even prior to that, I was I was performing to crowds that already knew what I was doing on stage because mm. mm. you know turntablism had gotten pretty technical and advanced, but the crowd knew what I was doing. Right. What I enjoyed with the Kanye experience was. I had to perform for crowds that had no idea what I was doing and right. I had to figure out how to still make it work. So mm. the growth with that was cool. Because I went mm. from you know working in a sort of closed circle to then that box breaking open. And you know, you definitely saw it with all the touring with Will too. When you're yeah. in front of a crowd that's like, you know, teenage girls that like that song from MTV and you and your <laughs> your MC is like all right, now show them why you're the greatest DJ in the world. You gotta right. convince an audience that doesn't even know <laughs> right. what you're about to do. Right. And that forces you to learn how to adapt your craft. Right. So that growth was cool. Yeah. You think DJs get uh, the amount of props that they deserve? No. No? No. I mean, but I you think, did say I think, earlier. I think, I think it's better now. Like as far as um, financial? Yeah, okay. I mean, but, I, but you know what? And, and, and I, didn't, I didn't think bad of the, the DJ explosion. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think we were in the dark for so long that I accepted the explosion. That was mm-hmm. just the, the, the counteract. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I felt like the DJ was cast aside, mm-hmm. um, especially in hip hop. Like, I mm-hmm. really started to get angry because I'm kind of like every rock group in the world has a DJ, wow. and every hip hop <laughs> artist in the world has a DAP machine. Wow, I didn't you know. I didn't, and I it was just kind of like, wow, yeah, like this was this, uh, this all kind of went together. Wow. But what happened was you cast us to the side. And we just kind of created a world on our own. That's kind of yeah. like, well, shit, if we the ones that play the music for people to dance, because I really thought that Vegas was going to be Bismarcky, Jay-Z. Wow. Like, I thought, like, okay, we got Sammy Davis Jr. and all the rest of that. Right. I, I thought that the growth of Vegas was going to be the performers in hip-hop, mm. not the DJs. Mm. But it got to the point that it was kind of like, well, shit, you got one good record, six bad records, uh. he can play all good records. Uh. I'm going to get him to play it. Uh. I don't need to see you perform. Uh. I can have him play your record. Uh. You know, and a lot of that was because there was no togetherness. We, we were pushed to the side that we was kind of like, yo, let's start our own network and community. And, uh. and it just blew up on the side. And now everybody who raps <laughs> wants to be a DJ. 
Well, yeah. No, everybody wants to be a DJ now. I'm not going to lie. I thought I could DJ for a second. I ain't going to lie. I didn't try. I didn't go publicly. But every now and then, Listen, and you know what's when crazy? I go on tour, I, I can throw the playlist. I do not get mad at anybody on earth who wants to try to be a DJ. Yeah. Okay. I am not mad at all. So you're not mad at um, iPod DJs? No, no let, me tell okay. you, let me tell you what I'm it is. I'm an DJ, it's, in my mind. It's, but what I'm not going to do, I am not going to not play high school ball, mm. college ball, mm. semi-pro, mm. and go and try out for the Sixers. Mm. I think that's disrespectful. Mm. It's disrespectful for all of the people that put in all of the time. Mm. You can play ball, but mm. there's a different level. So mm. I'm kind of like, then you just need to be prepared to somebody throw you on the floor mm. against the Knicks. Mm. The, and I'm talking about Mark and you, Anthony Knicks. And you got to take that out. We're not talking about the, about the, the Knicks, Knicks now. We're talking about Come John Google. Starks, Mark and, uh, 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 Anthony Mason yeah. Knicks, right? We're talking about the yeah. rough Knicks. You know, tall, yeah, yeah, that's so it. Like, tall, listen, Oakley, yeah, know, okay. I know what you're talking somebody about. Somebody who gets into it or wants right. to get into it or cares right. about getting into it, right. you know, the more the merrier. But right. it's kind of like... I, I've said on occasions mm -hmm. that um, I'm never worried about another DJ more than I'm worried about myself. Mm. Right. Like it's, it's... So because a person can control the playlist don't mean he can control the party. Listen, let me tell you something. I've always said learning to be a great DJ is not about the good nights. It's about how you do the bad. Right. It's about how you listen, cause we mm, all real. you know where I'm going, all right? You know where I'm that going. That night, right. that I'm like, yo, I'm I about to buy it, it, and it's kind of like, yo, like I've looked at my watch, and I'm like, I gotta play two hours, and I got an hour and fifty five minutes left. Let right. me tell you something. I did this guy in Canada uh -huh. booked me. He was the soaker prince of Canada. <laughs> this motherfucker was like, I want you to play this part. I said, listen, I don't know shit about soaker. <laughs> he said, it don't matter. I want you to do you. I stuck to my guns and was like, no, 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 uh. fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and when I tell you, I walked in and never realized that soca was 195 BPM <laughs> and they was did it did it did it did it and, and it was 3,000 motherfuckers and they was going crazy. And they and what, announced and what are you the playing? Tour. Let me tell you, you got me nervous. He's definitely right, slowing the vibe. Right before I went on, he walked over, he said, feel free to drop a couple soca records. Here. And I said, yo, I told you. And he was like, no, he trying to help you out. You know, if you, if you want. And I came on, and when I tell you, I will never in my life forget the girl in the front row, because I didn't play the whole set. I played maybe like 30 minutes, but for 27 minutes, she was like this. She would not stop shaking her hands. No. Like, they were so fucking mad at me. And then, I, you know, because you go through that ego, like, fuck it. Fuck y'all. I'm going to plow through this shit. where you at shit. again? Where, oh, where, I'm in Canada. I'm in Canada. Canada. Okay, all right, cool. I'm going to plow and, through and, 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 you know. So this is Caribbean people with yeah. attitudes. Oh, Yo, there's kind of listen. picture in this. And it's cold in oh, Canada. Yeah. Keep listen. going here. And, you mm. know, but you have, everybody has them nights. Wow. And I'm like, yo, a, as a DJ, you learn how to get through those nights. Like, right. you know, it's kind of like, we all kind of know what we want to play. Right. But we all have the ability to make a motherfucking detour yeah. in a heartbeat. <laughs> because you have to. Like, uh, uh -huh. listen, I'm not going to fit that round peg in the square hole. If that motherfucker don't fit, I'm grabbing another peg. Right, right. You know, but you, you know, and I'm like, a lot of these new guys know one way. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to troubleshoot. Right. 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 And it's kind of like, you can see, you can see like, you know, we had plenty of times standing on stage like, yo, he's he's going down in a flame. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's going down like I feel bad, you know, but that's how you figure it out. You, you ever you ever tanked uh, you and Will together? Like had a bad show? We, we had we had a sh we never had a bad show. I need to hear about but whatever this is. We did the Apollo. Listen, you didn't get booed. No, no. no. You got next to me? When booth? I tell you we were on the edge, it was Sandman yeah. came out. Oh, we, the Listen, Sandman came no, out. He no, just no. didn't come no, out. We didn't do that Apollo. We did the Apollo Theater. Oh. But we did the Apollo Theater with Guy. Oh. At the height of Guydom. Oh. And we were headlining. And it was kind of like, yo, who the fuck made us headline with Guy in Harlem? 
Now, uh-huh. they got fucking groove me and, uh-huh. and Damn, we know what I think man. I can beat Mike Tyson, uh-huh. which was already a little suspect. Then, <laughs> Wait, what? You know, and I'm, oh man, that shit was hard. But the bad thing is we did two shows. We did a matinee show, uh-huh. which we got through by the skin of our teeth. And then we had to do the nighttime show. And oh, then, that, that follow? yes, same day. Back and the, 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 the waiting for that point. second show, uh-huh. hand sweating, cause we like, yo, we we can't go on after Guy. All right. All right. Like you can't go right. on after Teddy Riley in heart. Teddy could spit from his crib to yeah. heart, you know, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, Apollo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, it was, you know, I never want to think about them days. So you want to think, so you would label that your worst show. Not to, not, not a bad show, but your, like, your not that so was, great show. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was it. I mean, you know, we, we. So what's, we, your, what's your favorite show you ever had? Oh you ever man, did? I can't. Because that's that you know I don't know if, if what's that's one of the real. standouts ones where you you just it was like man well you know what's crazy after twenty years Will and I did two shows last year wow we did a show in Croatia and we did a show in Blackpool in the UK um, wow. and it was just us and it was like thirty thousand people wow. um, and it was you know it was it was it was different because you don't wow. know. Right. You know, it's kind of like, mm, right. shit, we doing these shows. I, I don't know. Like from the, right. from, I have no idea right. what my or Will's relevancy to the world is. You, you know, you hear it. Oh, I have an idea, but, brother. But You're I, a motherfucking but, legend. Yeah. That's yeah. Fucking. You know, you know, you know, but continue, you, continue you, to be humble. You, I'm not gonna be humble. You almost you. think everybody's lying to you, so you don't know. But understand. I mean, listen. You, you know, I you don't you know. I get what you you're know, saying, and, and to me, it's it's safer me not knowing. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know where I'd be if I if, right. if, you if say, I that's thought. humble. That's, that's but humble. it's just you know, so so going out and mm-hmm. se- you know somebody selling a show and tickets and all the mm-hmm. rest of this, you just kind of like, damn, is is anybody going to show up? How do you know? But to watch people show up and with albums and Fresh Prince of Bel Air jerseys and jackets, and it's and, just you guys. You know, and it was just that's us. crazy. Um, and it was crazy because during the show. Um, I had a, a monitor in Will's ear, then I had a microphone that I could talk to him during the show. And I was like, yo, tell everybody to put up their phone and turn their flashlights on. Mm-hmm. And it, when, when he said it, I was so overwhelmed that I couldn't pick my phone up and take a picture of it. Like I froze. Mm. Cause to, because it was on a pier in, you know, in, in England and you couldn't see how far the crowd went back. Mm. So when everybody put their light on and you kind of saw how far 30,000 people went back, I, I, I couldn't pick my phone up and take a picture wow. because you were just kind of like, like, and listen, we ain't never got to do another show in life. <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, I'm, I, you know? God damn, let's make some noise for that, God damn. Now, Will just did some real crazy shit. He just, he just jumped in the Grand Canyon. What's what? He what's bungee up? jumped off of he a... He bungee jumped off a helicopter. What was that in the Grand Canyon? I was scared to death the whole time on Instagram looking at that. What, were you there? Or, or, no, I oh. wasn't going to that. But you, <laughs> did you watch it on Instagram? I, oh, yeah, I watched it. Yeah. Listen, nobody, nobody close to him like that. Yeah, yeah, right. Nobody. Like Charlie cursing on Nash, you know, yeah. Charlie was cursing on live TV. Because yeah. he, you know, he was uncomfortable. We all were uncomfortable. Yeah. Because uh, I'm like, did that, that, mm. that, No, is that come from just having too much money and you just want to do whatever the fuck you want? No, no. Or is that is just, he's an adventurous I, guy listen, and I, he just I, has to be adventurous? Will couldn't swim. And I watched Will cliff dive in Jamaica. He paid a guy to be in the water at the bottom and he cliff dove in Jamaica in the water. Wait, tell me. And he couldn't swim. Make. So understand, his thing <laughs> right, I'm trying has to explain always that. been. <laughs> yeah, listen, his thing has always been, if I'm afraid of it, I'm running to it. Mm. Now, I ain't got that. Yeah, me neither. I ain't got none yeah. of that. <laughs> it takes a bigger man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, he, he, but he, that's he, he, always been his thing. Listen, uh, he was terrified of that. Uh, oh, jumping. What? Wow. He jumped in the Grand Canyon. Uh. Grand Canyon, I, that, ain't no, that ain't no black people shit. I'm just throwing it out there. It Listen, ain't no black people shit. It's some rich. No white I mean, people shit. <laughs> it's some. I'm rich and I'm just. It's, it's, I don't think this is color at all. This has no color. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this <laughs> has no color. Yeah, this is, this is like, I'm, I'm rich and uh, I have. I'm just gonna live my best life for real, <laughs> for real. Like that, because that's getting high. 
Yeah. Like, that's getting high. Like, you know, with these kids with these Percocets nah, yeah. and this lean, that's not high. Dude, what the fuck? The adrenaline that rush from that is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you could, it could be over. In the Grand Canyon? Woo hoo hoo. Yeah, I'm good. So, you, got, you haven't had a bad show? <laughs> Get out of here! Yeah, I'm one of those DJs that sticks to his guns a lot. And, and that's a bad it's case a bad scenario thing, sometimes? It's more of like, I just want to, I want to do me. So you were in there playing Cheap Keep when niggas want reggae thrown? <laughs> no, 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 when niggas want daddy and bass at a hip hop. You playing what? I'm playing drum and bass at a hip hop. Oh, club. wow. Back when like oh. that shit was not EDM and hip hop were not a oh. thing. Wow. Yeah, early, wow. Uh, early 2000s, so yeah. I was uh-huh. just going there and be like, this is what I like. I don't give a fuck. And you would stick with it. I'm stick with it. And when you, is there a sign that you're fucking up? Like he said, the, the girl <laughs> was looking at him. The crowd starts to park. <laughs> oh. and you start just seeing everybody. Terrible. Move on. But uh-huh. I would usually do it at the end of the night, though. So mm. I'd make sure I give them what they wanted. Mm. You know, come see me do my thing and mm. play music you like. And then I'd be like, all right, 10 minutes, you know. What? For me, mm. do my thing. You? Yeah, definitely. I think what, every what, DJ's what, had bad shows. But what's, what's one of your memorable moments? I, to me, a bad show is also if you show up in some city and there's like no one there. Mm. You know what I mean, you show up and you're like, I've had some of my best shows with with like like 20 people there. That's I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I, got, I got paid. Yeah, hey, you like, have fun. Fun. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I ain't gonna go on stage. I'll just be pulling right in front of these niggas. Like, come here, niggas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to like that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, word. But as DJs, we gotta figure out a vibe. Oh. Even though you know, sometimes a bad show could also be a a, a full room. But you could, like, we got to, like, read the crowd, right? So we're mm-hmm. looking. I remember, uh, like, one show where I would look and I'd be like, all right, this area wants, like, house music. Mm-hmm. And this area wants new hip-hop. This area wants old hip-hop. And this mm-hmm. area wants, like, EDM, trap kind of stuff. But I got to, like, figure out a flow that makes everyone happy. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just can't. Mm. You, that's like, you gotta crack a code, sometimes you just don't crack the code. Mm-hmm. Like, I try my best. Like yesterday, we was at Don Q's. Don C's thing. Don C's, excuse yeah. me, my bad. I'm bugging. Don C's event. Um, uh, and that crowd was a, a little different. How did you. <laughs> like, you know what I'm trying to say? It's, it's all different types of people. You got all type of industry people in there. And how did. How, how, by the way, it was like a. a like a like an open bar kind of event, so that yeah. draws all, all kinds oh, of people. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So it was like I, I, free alcohol. And now, <laughs> now that I think about it, how do you attack an event like that? Like, I mean, that one to me was, for me, was also kind of casual because yeah. it was my friend's product launch. I right. wasn't, I wasn't even looking at it that much on some like, yo, I gotta rock the crowd. I was just thinking, right. here's a bunch of like influencer types that came to support, right. you know, an event. Let me just play some records that they probably didn't expect to hear, but that they, that they still like. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times, like, I'll go into a party and think, I don't want to just make the crowd happy, I want to leave a lasting impression. And mm. for them to go home and tell their friends and be like, yo, A-Track played this record last night, I never mm-hmm. expected to hear right. that, but it worked. Right. Like, I, I want to surprise people. Right. That's a big difference between DJing and being an MC, where as an MC, you're doing your songs, but we can mm. play any yeah. of a good mm. bajillion songs. It's up to us to choose stuff that will work, but hopefully that surprises people. Mm. So a thing like that, like last night, I'm just thinking like, all right, these, this crowd probably has been hearing the same 10 songs two right. times a night this right. whole week during Basel. Right. Let me, <laughs> yeah. And let me play a few different things to, to leave an impression. You, you okay. guys prefer doing tableless sets or playing full sets? I've, I've got to be honest, as a person that's not a DJ, I don't know what the fuck you just said. Like tricks. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, these, these guys are instruments is what I was saying. These right. guys could do amazing things on the turntable and they could just do that and it'd be like a show. Mm. Or do they want to play like, you know, just like right. a club set? But I think mm. the, the ultimate goal is to find, to figure out a set that merges yeah. all of that. And that's, yeah. I looked up to Jeff from way early on, on that tip, when I would go see him spin, even back when I lived in Montreal, and I'd be like, yo, this is so ill because he's rocking the crowd, but he's also doing tricks that would normally make the crowd sort of stop and watch. They're mm. still going with it. And like finding mm. that balance, mm-hmm. that's like the holy grail for technical. God damn, let's make some noise. God damn it. <laughs> So, 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 what's your what's your favorite part of DJ? Um, you know what? I think I think um, and 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 Crazy and A Track can attest to this. Mm-hmm. As a DJ, there's a point when you know you got them. Mm-hmm. And I say sometimes you got them. The crowd, you got them. Meaning the you crowd. Got them. Okay. When you got them. Right. Sometimes you can have them as soon as you walk on. Right. You ain't got to play shit. It's like, yep, this is, right. 
Uh-huh. And then sometimes it's like, oh, you're going to fight me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so it may take me 15 minutes right. to yeah. get you. Right. I think what I like is knowing that I know what's about to happen three records from now and mm-hmm. you don't. Mm. Like, I'm like, okay, keep that stone. Like, especially when you get the dude that's in the front. You want to be in the front, but you want to have a stone face. Right. And, and I'm like, dance. oh, yeah. I'm a, listen, I, you going to nod your head. You going <laughs> to nod your head. Like, I'm, I'm betting money right. that my goal is kind of like, because you don't know. And I'm watching you. I'm watching this smile come on and go off. I'm watching you ice grill. I'm watching your hands loosen up Look. to the point that at the end of the night, you can't take it and you just say, fuck it, I'm going to go to the back because you, you got to you gotta let go. But I think knowing that you know something that everybody else doesn't. Right. Like, I, 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 I know where this is going to end, and I know where you're going to be when this ends. Right. But you don't know. How, how do you deal with, like, uh, like one of my worst shows I ever had was a guy was in the, uh, I was performing, and a guy was in the front desk. T-O-N-Y! Yo, yo, dude, that's seven songs later. <laughs> Relax. And how do you deal with drunk people who just come up to you? I don't. And they just requesting Listen, records. I am the, I am the master <laughs> of, of dodging ignoring you? people. <laughs> oh, I, listen, I've had fist pounds in my face like this, that I'm like this, that I, that I don't see. You know, because you'll get the guy that's kind of like, yo, you know, mm-hmm. you know, somebody just want, I got to come up and shake my hand. And, you, and yeah. especially now, like yeah. my man got the cell phone. Right. So get me, get get me getting yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Give me a like, selfie. I'm, I'm right, I'm right yeah. in the middle of some shit. Right. <laughs> like I'm right in the middle of some. Like tell me what part of this did right. you like? Did you not I, see? I, I'm I, not I saw working. the video that Kid Capri did, and I would never do it, but I right. gave him so much props that well, the girl kept asking him to play something, mm-hmm. and he stopped the music completely, and was like, okay. Since you want to fuck up everybody's good time for what you want to hear, I want you to tell everybody what you want. And it, it, it listen, she started crying. She started crying, but it's kind of like, yo, like. <laughs> you kind of got what you asked for. Type of thing. You know, so it's, I, you know, you just got to ignore them. Mm. That, I mean, I've seen that. I've seen that a couple of times. Uh, so you just ignore them. That's that's that's. Listen, everybody, right. everybody, you know. I mean, I, which is a whole nother issue. But it's kind of like you wake up to the ten songs, right. you go to work to the ten songs, you listen to the ten songs on your lunch break, you listen to them on the way home, mm-hmm. and you go to the club and you fucking want to ask me to play the ten songs. Mm-hmm. Like just get in the car and listen to the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, you 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 have like I believe that especially as DJs, you have to kind of. You have to kind of stand your ground. Like there's a level of me that I feel like I'm standing my ground to protect the culture. Mm. Because one of my biggest fears is, uh, is I was like, I never, I never want to feel like you can walk into a club and the DJ booth being closed and somebody's playing a mix and you don't know it. Mm. Like, like um, let me, let me, I'll stop you for one second. I was watching something uh, earlier. It was like Robots Kill on, on HBO, right? And it's basically, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm describing this very wrong, but it's basically they're showing you how, like, in a, in a couple of years, you might not even need a barber. Like, they're going to have something, yeah, that's just come, you going to go, and it's going to be all that. You think they can ever do that with a DJ? No. Okay. No. Because <clears throat> they got robots right now. Listen, is they, you is know, they, people talk about equipment that, can put things in key and put right. things in mix. What you can never do is find an algorithm that I can look in your eyes and tell mm. that you about, you really want to fucking hear this Mob Deep record. Exactly. Mm. Like, they, they'll, right. when they develop that, then I'll get a little nervous. Mm. But, mm. At the, you know, at the end of the day, I also feel like, once again, not trying to be this conspiracy theorist, I also feel like the reason why they're dumbing the music down is to make it to the point that you can do something like that. To make it serviceable. Mm. Yeah, so I'm like, mm. yo, like I appreciate, I mad appreciate A-Track and Craze mm. because when you see them, they do something that no machine in this world could ever do. Straight and up. I think you have to show that. I get mad at DJs with skills that right. get up there and just fucking play records and never show an ounce of their skills. I'm like, right. yo, you are, bu- you are putting yourself in this category that they're gonna enclose the DJ booth and mm. play your fucking mixtape. 
You mm. better make sure that there's not a machine on earth that can duplicate what you can do. Mm. Like, and that's saving the culture. That was hard. That was hard. That was hard. That's some deep shit right there. That was some deep shit right there. Cause it made me think of that. Cause, it, cause I, I actually, as I was watching it, I was getting a haircut and I just looked at my barber. I was like, yeah. <laughs> you about to be out. Yeah. You about to be out, my nigga. You be coming late. I just looked at him and it didn't, it didn't make me think of that just now, but that, that what you just said just makes uh, also, uh, DJs are DJs are curators. And so even aside from the skill aspect, you know, to have a human being making choices, yes. right. you know, you can't replace that. Because think about it, like when Spotify first came out right. and there was like all the music in the world available, a lot of people uh, were Was it like up, rap caviar or something like that? Before oh, that. Okay. Because what I was getting at is they had to start doing playlists to mm. recommend certain records to people because at first when you had that was, thing was the playlist all, originally made by DJs or that that came from the Spotify's and I feel things like, like that? come from like the iPod. Yeah. yeah. When mm -hmm. iTunes <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. iPod. Right, but so now, but, when all but the now the playlist is on, on like, like when you go to Spotify now, you can go to a playlist. Yes. Like you go to Tidal, you can go to the playlist because right. it's, it's curated by certain individuals. Yeah. But was that a, 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 initially like a DJ set? That's what a playlist is, yeah, correct? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little I off. I think it's a way, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's. It's a DJ set without it's somebody a, DJing. Without yeah. somebody DJing, yeah. yeah because part of DJing is not just the songs you play, it's the energy that you bring. The right. crazy thing with certain DJs is, you could be out hearing a DJ set and someone play one record and you'd be like, man, this is dope. What is that? And you find out what the record is. You mm. go back home and listen to it and it doesn't hit you the same way. Because mm. certain DJs, the way they bring the record in, the way they read the, the order energy, of the record. Yeah, and just there's something about that energy yeah. control. It's like, you know, magicians where right. the record by itself isn't the same thing. So a playlist right. doesn't have the flow and the energy of a DJ set. All right. It's yeah, like no. humanized. So I just realized I'm surrounded by DJs. Yeah. <laughs> I just realized that damn, I'm the only MC here. This is real. I ain't gonna run. We could do a crazy show for DJ right now. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, uh, I, I would, I'm, I'm loving this uh, because as an artist, uh, I've never done a show without a DJ. Um, and I know that that controls the thing. So just in case anybody's ever you know, we, we know that you guys run the show. We know that you guys run the world. We appreciate you. You know, from every artist in the world to, you know, every fucking fan to everybody who has an ear who listens to, to fucking great music, we want to say thank you, man. We have all of y'all. Because we, we know that DJs run the world. And also, uh, big up to DJ Enough and uh, DJ Camilla was supposed to stop by. And that would have been dope to have all y'all oh, DJs man, and man. shit. It would have not been enough records to now, break. We need more, more of these, yeah. So, so let me just ask y'all something before we get up out of here. The transition from vinyl to fully digital. Yeah. Is it a good thing? Because the one thing I, I, I will tell you was Paying your dues as a DJ kind of felt like carrying crates. Mm -hmm. Went with it. Can we replace carrying crates with a book bag with your laptop? <laughs> with weight. But you gotta put a weight in there. You gotta put, <laughs> you gotta put a 25 <laughs> weight in there. And like, 10 book bags. Well, because book bag. I always felt like that was paying your dues as a DJ. Like, mm -hmm. like, like actually, you know, me being from New York City and me being uh, like, you know, going to the tunnel, I, that would be my thing. I would try to get there early and just see a DJ come out there with their crates and be like, you know, forgetting to wear their gloves and be freezing. I'd be looking like, that's a grill DJ right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But now these guys, they don't freeze at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but um, what is what is the transition from you know like seriously from crates to digital? Is it is it a plus, or is it a, is it? I don't know. It was a huge change, by the way, right. because like you know, it's almost people forget that before digital was even an option. When you made a record and you wanted to play it, you had to go get a dub plate press, right. or mm -hmm. an acetate press, mm -hmm. or if you, uh, you know, if, if the airline lost your luggage, you couldn't play that night. Right. I don't miss 
any of the final None. stuff. It's kind right. of like this world None. strategy, so people yeah. come up to us and they're like, yeah, final. I'm uh. like, I don't miss final. None. Really. Uh. Breaking my back, having airlines lose me, I don't uh. miss any of that. So if you lose your computer, you just down. Well, you ain't gonna lose your computer. Your yeah, computer's on, on your back. Right, right, right. But, but you would check in <clears throat> multiple crates in the house. Oh, oh man, you say that's, that. that was, that's a nightmare. <laughs> like, you, you <laughs> hold your that. breath every time <laughs> the luggage comes. Because yeah. uh. it's kind of like, there's one, there's another. Right. Like, I, I got to London one time and the tops of my crates came. The tops of my boxes. Because it was a bunch of DJs that worked in the airport. And they know when you, oh, London was gangster back in the day. They knew you were coming, and your records would come, and it would be the tops, and you'd be waiting for the bottoms. Because first of all, you know, if the bottoms, if the tops ain't on, the records are all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it would never come. That somebody would take that off, put that top on, and it was somebody rocking in London. Wow. So for the record, we're saying, this is an upgrade. This is great. Oh, yeah. Digital thing makes every song available to you, and I, I think that's really cool too because it right. that ended up helping break down some of the barriers between genres and everything. It just it helped music evolve. Mm-hmm. Like in the last ten years, DJs really played a big role in, in steering the direction of, of music in general. A lot right. of artists started going to DJs and being like, "Yo, what's the next sound?" Right. And I think that digital transition helped in that because it brought everything yeah. together. And at right. the end of the day, even if it's kind of wild to think that every DJ that plays on every stage or every club has access to all the same records. But it's mm. kind of cool because then it puts the the yeah. force back. Like it's it's each DJ's own taste and style right. that right. make a difference whether they're good or not. Like right we now, we all have access to the same records. We have the like, same like, like right now, if we was to like you know we have a backyard right there. If we was to have a party. You guys will all have the same records, but it'd be all three different energies. Completely. Yeah. yeah. Completely different energies. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. Do, do you guys get mad, like, when you hear artists that sound the same? Is there DJs that do the same thing as another DJ? Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah? Absolutely. Oh, damn. Yeah. Oh, y'all got, y'all got designers and futures, too? <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and <laughs> like, y'all got, y'all got that? <laughs> like, yeah, like, those are my, they both my yeah. homies, you know what I'm saying? But, but y'all got that in the oh, DJ field? Completely. Real? Completely. What? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know you, but you know what? Again, once again, man, thank y'all for hanging out. Jazzy Jeff, man, I want to salute yes. you. Thank you. Can you say something? Listen, once again, um, I was talking about the whole transition in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yep. Um, I have to salute you oh. for the transition okay. into a different arena. I think thank it you. is very important to kind of show uh-uh. The, the, the hip hop generation, and right. especially because you know, we still we have some legendary stubborn brothers right. that are still <laughs> right. doing the one thing that right. there are a lot of people that are talented right. and more than just what everybody know, mm-hmm. know them for. And you're never too old mm-hmm. to take that jump into something else. So, mm-hmm. trust me, like for me to be sitting yeah. on right. here right. talking to you. Right. Right. In a completely different light than right. what I know you from <laughs> exactly. in the beginning yeah. is, is that that's that's Thank what I'm you. Right. Thank you. Because, because, and, and I tell I tell people that all the time is is that's who I took it from is like seeing you brothers take those opportunities and take those chances like you the LLs the Queen Latifas it was just like you know um and it was like yo you know what if I can do it on my way. Then I'm I, then then why not you know what I'm saying like why not like I love to I love to talk hip hop yeah. I think hip hop we this should be our first take we should have I, I believe I, I, I'll get out of here after this but um I believe that you shouldn't go to no other place for anything in life meaning if you want to go to a Yelp I'm making the hip hop Yelp right now right yeah. so I'm making the, the shit that Nori recommends wherever the fuck you eat and I'm gonna tell you look if you want to get shot this is where to go <laughs> <laughs> they, they got the best fried chicken dough in the world it might be worth it you know what I'm saying if you want to go get some you know what I'm saying you want to get some fried Oreos over here I got like I'm gonna I'm give people like and if you want to go to the news, I believe that if you go to the news, I believe Jim Jones should be the weather forecaster. I believe, <laughs> you know, I believe it should be Jim Jones. You know what I'm saying? I believe if you want to go sneaker shopping, I believe it's Fat Joe who should be guiding you through your sneakers and saying, listen, this is a, I believe you should get every bit of information that we have in hip hop through hip hop. Through yeah. You know what I'm saying? Through yeah. hip hop. I don't believe, I believe everything should come from us. And because I don't believe hip hop is even a color. I believe hip hop is a, as his own race. 
We are yeah. our own race. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you, what are you? I'm hip hop. Oh, oh shit, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's exactly yeah. what it because it our bond, our bond. Like I like I, it doesn't matter what color a person is. He's hip hop. If you hip hop to me, I fuck with you. Yeah. Like I don't give a fuck where your background comes from. And that's it's global. Hip hop is a language. It's 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 uh it's it's two things that's universal. It's food and motherfucking music. Like, no matter where you go, I, I remember I was in some airport and these people were just playing music and you just seen people just walking by. Everybody had a little bop to them. I'm saying, holy shit! Yeah. Everybody, even the ones are offbeat. They say, oh shit, this guy's okay. He, but everybody <laughs> love music. So everybody's not an issue, that's like food. And I think we gotta keep spreading this. I think we gotta keep spreading love. We gotta keep continue to, you know, to, to I, I love that these two, you know, DJs, these hot DJs, they came and they paid homage oh, immediately. Man. And that's beautiful, but that's, we need more that we need more of people of our legends continue to feel like legends and continue to be out there making money continue to be out there making our culture look good because if we ain't gonna big each other up ain't nobody gonna yeah. big us up bro and guess what we need a little bit of bigging up yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. you need that pat on your shoulder yeah. i ain't gonna lie to you that's why I'm, you know that's why marathon runners be having them people on the side They're like yo man, you, you keep it going all right yeah come on 26 miles come on let's do it drink test take it up Thank you, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you.